This episode of The Casual is brought to you in part by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to all the marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace delivers it in an all-around package so you can build an easy, streamlined, and beautiful online presence. It's that time again. Time to make impossible lists that no one fully agrees with, full of bests, full of worse, and whatever the hell. But you know, at The Casual, we like to be contrarians. We don't like to be like everybody else. That's what that means. So for our first end of the year list, we're gonna go with 10 of the most slept on sneakers of 2019 because why not? It should be fun. I'm your boy, Ragey Casual. That's next. Let's get it. All right, so when it was announced that Adidas was going to collab with Childish Gambino, my guy, a lot of cats were excited, including myself, until they released. The Continental, Niza, and Lacombe iterations were arguably one of the most low-key dope sneakers to release in 2019, perfect to substitute those Nike kill shots with, or a pair of Vans, and yet a free Coachella giveaway wasn't enough to get these guys off of the shelf, which is a shame because they were they were nice, had a little deconstruction in there, it was, it was dope. People are going to keep on Ignoring Yakso at their own peril, the Jun Takahashi led Nike collection left us with a dope iteration of the Zoom Pegasus, which was just as good a running shoe as it was a nice departure from the Jordan infested year. It's too bad these didn't get the traction, no pun intended, that they deserved. In the right closet and the right wardrobe, these would be ridiculous. Comme de Garçons partnership with Nike has given us some iconic sneaks over the years, and one of the most ambitious in 2019 was the Presto Tint. While certainly not the first sneaker you'd think to add to your collection, it was one that so many wanted to love and were excited about, but had no idea how to pull them off or without someone yelling that damn, what are those to their face? Just another case of in the right hands, these are deadly. Only problem is that it really is for a specific type of fit specialist. In Japan, for example, you can find these on feet everywhere. Well, not everywhere, but a lot of people wear them. And what do you expect? It's Japan. That's Comme des Garçons is a Japanese label. Japanese get into that kind of stuff. It's not so much that the Y3 Kaiwa was slept on. It's that Y3 is so damn out of pocket with their prices at times, or maybe all the time, that would-be Kaiwa fans which there are plenty, are stymied by the price tag. But make no mistake, the Kaiwa was a great addition to the Y3 lineup and the chunky sneaker era, and still maintains a dope silhouette for the right individual. The Fear of God Mox got a bad rap for sure. Pretty much deemed the ugly duckling of the Nike Fear of God collab, but that's because they were very situational sneaks for situational people. I mean, they also fit awkwardly as well, which didn't help matters, but those that picked them up and found a way to maneuver them were left with a great, easy to style rotation sneaker that pops. Early in the year, it seemed that Nike was batting a thousand with classic releases, especially when they released the Skylons. And then poof, it was gone. It, it, it just, this fever was gone. And then the Nike Fear of God version came out and still crickets. It's like no one wanted to hate on the shoe because it was still a Skylon and the Fear of God certainly sold, but to many it was just a Skylon with a Fear of God skin. But the Fear of God Skylons came with a bunch of extras like the adjustable ties and the dusty vintage colorways, making it one of the best renditions of the sneakers. So if you didn't get a Skylon, the Fear of God ones would have been a great choice. It's just that everyone who wanted a Skylon already got them. So there was no need to get two, let alone a Fear of God one that was priced a little bit out of range. Nike's on-air campaign gave us some pretty dope sneakers. Korea was crazy, Shanghai took the top popular spot, and London was clean. Paris, we gonna, we, we gonna talk about that. But one of the sneaks that just didn't turn enough heads despite being the most modular of the bunch, the Tokyo Mazes, which will go down as one of the most missed opportunities for those that want a dope sneaker that bucks the trend. You have multiple shoelaces, inverted monochrome on each sneaker, detachable emblems, the maze, was dope, plain and simple, and just got buried under the weight of hype and the on-air campaign itself. 
Off-White has done great under Nike. There's no denying that. And most of the time, anything Off-White Nike is a winner. It's a hit. However, when images of the Terra Kiger were released, it left many scratching their heads like, do I really like this sneaker or do I just like that it's Off-White Nike? But make no mistake, when you see these functionally on someone's feet, they go pretty hard. And yes, they sold, but considering that Off-White is always hyped under Nike, to see these ambitious takes sit for any amount of time slept on seems to be the appropriate qualifier. Yet another undercover snub, another day people miss out. The undercover day breaks are arguably the dopest sneakers hype these passed up, which is great. That was awesome because those who really love undercover and love this sneaker were able to snatch a pair easily. Certainly taste driven, the day breaks are the modern beater for the international sneaker enthusiast. A perfect rotation sneaker with multiple colorways make this one a for sure winner in 2019. And the fans, thank you Hypebeast for not going nuts over these. Thank you. We hope you practice this more. Please, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. More of this. And finally, finally, the travesty the travesty of the Ambush Air Max 180. Just an overall disappointment because these could easily be one of the best sneakers to come out in 2019. Yoon of Ambush is up next. It's set in stone. And to see her first sneaker with Nike go the way of slept on is downright tragic. It's a tragedy, which is crazy because had you seen the lines here in Japan for Ambush Nike, you would have thought these were going to be on Fire. But the problem was 2019 gave us so damn much that these were easily passed up for sneakers that come out all the damn time, like special ultra limited edition Jordans. So that's the unfortunate reality and these easily hit the bin. But that's okay because it's a worthy sneaker to add to the collection without breaking the bank especially in that white colorway. So those were the most slept on from the casual and will most likely continue to be slept on. And that's fine because there's a ton of sneakers out there that you don't need to go crazy over. Get what you like, wear it well. But let us know what sneakers you felt were snubbed in 2019 in the comments. And give a thumbs up if you liked this video. Follow us on Instagram to stay up on the latest from Japan, but most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy, and keep it casual. Yoroshiku and I'll see you guys in a minute. It was great. Now there's no table. None. <laughs> right? We stopped the table stuff. Awesome. If you're looking to build a website, be sure to check out our partner, Squarespace. They got templates, social integration, customer service, and most importantly, it's easy. You can get that brand started or get those picks up in an official portfolio. Whatever you want, you can do it. But most importantly, you get 10% off when you start simply by using our link, squarespace.com slash the casual. So now you got nothing to lose. Get that site started today with Squarespace.